I'm Alan Briskin. Uh, I have a doctorate in organizational psychology. I've been, uh, uh, I have a management practice that I started 25 years ago, mm -hmm. and currently I'm working with uh, hospitals. And I'm also the author of four books, including Daily Miracles and The Power of Collective Wisdom. At the most basic, uh, collective wisdom is knowledge and insight that comes through the interaction of a group or community. But at a deeper level, it is about the interrelationships and interconnectedness we have in the human family and uh, to, to the earth that we're on. You know, we often, uh, what we found in the research with collective wisdom is many of the practices that create the conditions for collective wisdom are the inverse of how we typically practice. So, for example, in most groups, most corporations, most organizations of any kind, people assume it's what they say and how they talk and what, you know, that they're talking is what creates meaning. And what we discovered was it was the listening that creates meaning. Mm. How we listen to each other. Mm. We listen each other into being. And we need to create settings where that listening, that deep listening is possible. I think they're very important related ideas. That whole system healing assumes, once again, that our health comes from wholeness and both Health and wholeness and the word holy all come from the same old English root, root word, halen. Mm -hmm. And so whole systems healing is how do we make sacred again mm -hmm. uh, our healing? How do we make sacred again? How do we make holy again? Uh, and find that we are not uh, separate, you know, that we need each other to complete each other. And so when you begin to design things with that in mind, you begin to explore the connections people have, you begin to explore the health effect that we can have on each other if we uh, reach each other at this deep level. It's a collective wisdom, a lot of the work of collective wisdom was to see that this was beginning to happen all over the world, that people were beginning to think of groups as places for healing places for creativity, places for incubation. So particularly in the healthcare fields, when we begin to recognize our interrelationships, when we begin to look at nature as part of uh, a healing environment, when we begin to look at the practitioner as being in relationship with the so-called patient, but now who is leading and who is following changes because we're learning from each other. That's where I think whole system healing and collective begins to meet because there is an intimacy to collective wisdom that we need to cultivate with each other. And only by cultivating that intimacy with each other can we design systems that hold together. No system that's designed without relationship can sustain the, the, the volatility and ambiguity and uncertainty of the times we live in. One premise is that whole system healing is sustained by our own inner transformation. So while we want to create some kind of large system that we can all live well in, the only way we will be able to sustain that larger system is through the, the changes and the transformations we make in ourselves. And to work outward from from noticing that we're capable of making those changes in ourselves. Uh, examples that we started to give of, of deep listening, it may mean something as simple as uh, waiting a few extra heartbeats before jumping into the conversation. Uh, one of the things we talk about is suspen suspension of certainty. Most people all of us to a degree, operate from that mental sensation of certainty to being correct, to becoming rigid, to judging others. Mm -hmm. And it's just those things that abort the emergent process of groups. 
So by being very aware of our own judgments, by being very aware of our own certainty, by suspending that certainty, it doesn't mean we have to disagree about what we think is right, but it means we have to know that to the degree that we impose that certainty on others, we are aborting the chance for something new to be born. Mm -hmm. Third practice is really beginning to inquire into the larger system that we're in. Most groups, for example, would, would give their right leg to be able to quickly come to agreement and get out of the room. Common expression is, uh, you know, the bus is leaving, you know, get on the bus or be left behind. That's fine to a degree. Uh, certainly the, the t deadlines and timelines that can't allow us to just talk endlessly without moving into action. But when we don't explore the whole system, we end up missing something crucial that down the road will uh, abort the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And so wisdom really is about, it's not just about profound ideas, it's about sound judgment and it's about results. And partly by committing to looking at the whole system it, we're capable of, of creating things that can last. And so it's an invitation to create safe places for people to really talk of their experience, to really share their differences, to know that their differences represent in some way the larger collective that we're all part of. Mm -hmm.